Hydro Boost Hydrating Cleansing Gels. Face wash and hand wash. All right, so I finished up the Urea Face Cream from Eucerin. Physical Fusion UV Defense. I've been really happy with this. It's kind of got a cafe ole, cafe mocha, if you will, tint to it. If you have a deeper skin tone, let me know if you've ever tried this before, how it works out for you. I'm curious. But the value of a tinted sunscreen for people with deeper skin tones is that an iron oxide component uh, can offer some protection against blue light, HEV, which does, uh, sorry, my <laughs> model laundry my laundromat. My washing machine is going in the background. Uh, iron oxides may offer some protection against HEV or blue light that contributes to early onset and more stubborn uh, pigmentation in medium to deep skin tones. And it also causes a lot of oxidative stress. That visible light, it comes from the sun mostly, the majority of it. Uh, so you don't have to worry about it in like your devices and stuff. I mean, unless you're like, glued to a phone like 24 hours a day around the clock, which if that's the case, you have bigger problems to deal with. You need, need to get some sleep. But yeah, tinted sunscreens can definitely be really a helpful asset in fading and discoloration. So I get some questions from time to time about expiration dates on skincare products. You know, it varies a lot from product to product depending on uh, the formulation overall. Most products, should last a couple of years unopened. Um, but once you open them, there's typically a little symbol on products, but skincare and makeup, it's like a little open jar and it's got a number in the letter M that stands for how many months it's good for after opening. I suggest when you open a product, even though I don't do this, um, I suggest writing on it when you open it. The products that have more water, like lotions, serums, they're gonna have a shorter shelf life than waterless products like bar soap or Vaseline. Unopened Vaseline, sealed and unopened, has like a shelf life of like 10 years. The risk of using expired skincare products is that with time, the depending on the active ingredient, like ingredients like retinol and vitamin C, as you're exposed to air, light, eventually they're no longer stable, so they're not as effective. They're more likely to cause irritation as they degrade. Then for other skincare products, the preservatives, you can't really guarantee that they're as functional beyond the expiration date, so you run the risk of bacterial contamination, skin infections, and products just kind of start to separate after a period of time. Uh, speaking of stuff that you definitely need to be mindful of mascara mascara I get rid of after three months I mean usually I'm done with it by then because I wear it every day but mascara you definitely can get little uh, styes as bacteria are harbored in the mascara and then of course don't share products with people you guys yeah, don't share your cosmetics with people. It's also good to, you know, be mindful of where you store your skincare products. Keep them in a cool, dry, relatively dry place away from like extremes of heat. Anyways, it is coffee time. Oh, sweet child of mine. Today I'm doing the chameleon ground coffee. Rather enjoyed the whole beans from Four Siggy, but I polished those off. Well, hey guys, I am on my way to try and get an oil change because I am a long overdue. Well, not based on mileage, just based on the time since I last got an oil change has been quite a while. So I was planning out some content ideas for you guys and I noticed that Rodan and Fields is getting, 
had to pay a huge sum of money, like, I want to say billions, but maybe it was millions. Both, both millions and billions to me is just like a lot of money. Like, I know that they are substantially different amounts. I'm not a boob. However, like, they're both equally scary amounts to me. I, I, I don't know. Like, I don't really, it, they just seem like unattainable amounts. Anyways, I know they're, they had to pay a ton of money, millions or billions, for their lash serum because they had this prostaglandin analog. I made a video about this a while ago. Um, and those prostaglandin an analogs, this is basically what bimatoprost is, uh, which is what Latisse is. They can have side effects like discoloration of the eye color. There are even reports of changing the distribution of the fat and fat displacement around the eyes. I don't know why this person's honking at me. Like, I'm at a red light. Like, what do you want me to do? Just accelerate into the car in front of me? I'm not even sure. Anyways, um, what was I saying? Yeah, um, side effects can happen. Well, their lash serum had a compound very similar to bimatoprost, prostaglandin analog, same kind of side effects. And they got, they got nailed on that one. Unpopular opinion, I'm sure. I will not be sad when the day comes where the lash extensions fall out of favor. Do you guys think they'll ever become unpopular? Like, I don't, I think they look nice on some people. It's all in how they're done. But some people's lash extensions, I'm sorry, they look horrible. They like don't, I don't know, they just look like, they look like stage lashes, like what you would use for a performance. Like, so that, cause you know, like stage makeup is super exaggerated. That's what some people's lash extensions look like. They interfere with like how the oils and things that your eyelid, put, eyelid glands put out onto your lashes and they can cause, they can and do cause persistent dry eyes. They do look nice on some people, don't get me wrong. So if you get lash extensions, I'm not like telling you that I think they're awful, awful appearing. They look nice on some people, but other people I'm just like, to each their own, that looks not <laughs> like something, I don't know. It almost looks like there's a strip too. You know when you get, when you buy false lashes, you know, they come on a strip, that thick band, you, that's what they look like. It's just not a good look. It's been a while since I bought false eyelashes. I used to buy them, you know, for ballet, but I, I don't need to buy them anymore. Now, I think the individual lashes that you have, I mean, I think that can look nice filling in, but man, no bueno. So we're going over here to the Rice Village area. So if they are able to take me, then that means I'm going to go shopping in Rice Village. I don't really need anything, but I always enjoy shopping around in Rice Village. I went ahead and fired up my new Oventure ring. It's basically like a bracelet, but it's got a key ring on it. I'm really happy with this. It was kind of an impulse purchase, but I was getting sick of like my keys, always dropping my keys, and so far that's really been working out well for me. Oh man, so I started reading that book I got at the library last weekend about, I already forget, I'm so bad you guys when it comes to remembering book titles and authors. Like once I start reading the book, I like forget what the book is called. Does, it, does that happen to anyone else? And I'm really bad with authors' names. Anyways, this book, it's about, it's talking about marijuana, uh, marijuana and like mental illness triggering mental illness but it's not written in a way that is I don't know he's trying to make a point but he's not doing a very good job because he's not referencing anything like there that really bothers me like when people state things as though they're facts and there's like no reference but I'm gonna finish reading it because I am very interested in um marijuana induced psychosis why I don't know I just get interested in topics around psychiatry I mean it's legal some places anyways um yeah I can cause the cyclical vomiting syndrome it's so bizarre because it makes you like incredibly nauseous and vomit and the only 
way to alleviate the nausea is to get in the shower. It's really strange. And the showering kind of alleviates the symptoms, and so the patients end up overbathing. That's why they appear in dermatology, because they have dry skin. Yeah, they have to get in a shower all the time, so they're like t constantly showering. It's it's some something about how it messes up in your brain, like, I don't know, where, wherever the vomiting center is, I, I've long forgotten a lot of my neuroanatomy, so forgive me, but it's somehow it messes that up, and you get this like cyclical vomiting thing. See, it's all tinted, you can't tell if they're open or not, and then they, Saturday, but, uh, it's closed. Well, I guess I'll just have to wait for my car to detonate. <laughs> I'm here in Ulta. I'm over by the hair care products. Has anyone tried this Bondi Boost shampoo and conditioner? Not... Actually, I don't know. For a salon quality shampoo, I guess that's not too bad. That doesn't seem too bad, actually. I mean, it's not, you know, VO5, but I'd be curious to try this. They have a little one. I reviewed Nioxin a few years ago for you guys, and I mean, the shampoo and conditioner, they're not going to address, like, thinning hair in a real way. Maybe cosmetically enhance the hair shafts by depositing, like, proteins or something, but they do have Minoxidil, but you don't need to buy the branded Nioxin Minoxidil. It's probably more expensive than just regular Rogaine or the Kirkland stuff. Although the formula may be nicer, like more to your qual um, more to your liking. What is this? Night Density Rescue with Oxidine? That sounds like something you would use to get out stains. Fragrance, caffeine. There's some idea that caffeine applied topically may help with hair loss, but fragrance, I don't know, this just seems like another something something to prey on the distress of losing your hair. It's in the hair growth support. None of these hair growth, hair loss supplements are worth it. Biotin. If you take biotin, you should stop a week before getting blood work because it can interfere with the accuracy of the blood work. Um, and it hasn't been shown to help with hair loss unless you have biotin deficiency, which is really rare. There's this guy. Have you guys seen him? The Liver King? Oh my gosh. So TikTok decided to show me this guy, the Liver King. And I don't know anything about this person other than what TikTok showed me of him. He just like sits down and inhales a bunch of raw egg whites and a brain, like a sheep's brain. I was nauseated and appalled, but consuming that many raw egg whites can put you at risk for biotin deficiency because of the avidin and the egg whites. It will bind up biotin so you don't absorb it. Cooking the egg whites denatures that so it's no longer a risk. And I believe like the like egg beaters products I think they have been treated to remove that, I want to say, but don't quote me on that. Yeah, biotin deficiency is no bueno. It can cause uh, eczema, hair loss. What is this climate control product? Anti-frizz nanotechnology? Climate control, like AC for your hair. I wonder if this is any good. I get sometimes staticky hair. Although I have to say, my hair is a lot more manageable with humidity than it is in a dry climate. Like when I lived in Colorado, I always found that the dry air made my hair super staticky. This mirror, does this packaging look an awful lot like that Bondi, Bondi Boost packaging? But... So I got one of these in my FabFitFun box. I had tried this many years ago and fell in love with it. And I don't know, I'm just not that impressed with it anymore. I think the Function of Beauty hair serum is like 10 times better. So TikTok keeps showing me Bethany Frankel's account. And honestly, I kind of watched The Real Housewives a few times, like, like a few seasons here and there. And Bethany Frankel, well, I don't know. She was always like my favorite one. Anyways, I mean, she always seemed like the more relatable one somehow. But she was recommending this highlighter palette. I'm actually almost finished with that 
she said any of these highlighter palettes are good. I'm almost finished with that Charlotte Tilbury bronzing palette thing that I've been using. And I was curious about these. Those are pretty colors. What's this fruit kiss? I've never seen these before. I'm sure they have flavor in them, which can cause chelitis, but they're vegan. I say that because a lot of lip balms have beeswax in them and, and or lanolin. I kind of like the packaging on these. I know that the Essence mascara was really popular. I tried one of their mascaras and I didn't care for it at all. I thought it was like really clumpy. But I don't think I've tried this TikTok famous one. Check out the packaging on this Flower Beauty Red Carpet Secret Eye Bright Palette. Look at that applicator. That's kind of weird looking. Hmm. Yeah, I was ragging on the false. I was ragging on the lash extensions earlier, but like seriously, some people, it just looks like they, they have like, I don't know, it, it just looks unsight, uns, unsightly in my opinion, but nobody really asked my opinion, so, and not all lash extensions look bad, it just, there's a certain type that seems like, but I was telling you guys, Bethany Frankel always seemed like, I said it relatable, but that's not really the right word because like, I don't know, but like she always seemed like there was more to her than just, like the other women on the show, they play up the whole cattiness and gossipiness, but she always seemed to have like, ugh, I don't know, she always seemed more driven towards doing her own thing. Um, well guys, here we are looking at the corn removers and bunion pads. <sighs> Ah, uh, welcome to Houston. Was planning to turn out this way, but they decided to tear up the road again. <sighs> oh, had to get out of CVS quick. Do you ever just kind of get the feeling like, I don't know, something ominous is about to happen? I kind of got that feeling in there. I don't know. All right, I'm on my way now to go get my car washed. Oh, never mind. <laughs> the car wash is closing. Is closing. Ah. Uh. Oh well. Dirty car, dirty oil. I'm a bad car owner. Is that what happens to the oil? Does it get dirty in there? Is that why you need to change it? I assume it gets like no longer as lubricating. Whatever it is that it does in there. I'm showing my ignorance here. Well, hey guys, I just finished my skincare routine, coming in with this Neutrogena lip mask. I've been liking this so far, not as much as the um, hydrating lip treatment, the Hydro Boost hydrating lip treatment, but this is pretty good. Um, it's glossy. Today, I put in effort to get some things done that just were not accomplished. <laughs> Oil change, didn't happen. Car wash, didn't change. I went into, why did I even go into CVS? I was looking for something that they didn't have, so that wasn't accomplished. When you wash like your hands, for example, be mindful that the detergents and stuff, they can get trapped up underneath like your ring and then be juxtaposed right up against your skin, rubbing back and forth. That can really be a nidus for a lot more irritation than is even necessary. Oh, man. I just found some TikToks to share with people about the issues which can happen from over plucking your brows. Man, don't make that mistake. I see a lot of people regretting that, but you don't come to regret it until a decade after the fact. It's kind of like sun sunbathing. You don't realize how much harm you're doing until you're much older and you're like, why did I do that? Eyebrow trends, they just come and go all of the time. And I just ignore them. Just ignore them. Be happy with the eyebrows you have. A little bit of grooming to clean them up and, you know, to open up your face. 
a little bit of makeup to fill them in or whatever, but don't spend an inordinate amount of time trying to fix your brows because I just feel like this industry of brow products has gotten out of control. I mean, it's just a tiny little strip of hair. And I think people throughout their lifetime, women especially, end up forking out a lot of money for the maintenance of that little strip of hair. Granted, it's really important for facial recognition, but I swear the trends, they just come and go and it's like a nonstop battle. The laminated brow thing, I mentioned the how I can't wait for the eyelash extensions to come out of favor. The laminated brow thing, now granted it looks nice on some people, same thing with the lash extensions, but some people I'm just like, no, it doesn't look natural. It does not look natural. It looks like something out of Dr. Strange. I, I can't explain. Um, that's just my opinion as an old fogey, but <laughs> that's a trend I look forward to going bye-bye. <laughs> Anyways, you guys, those are my opinions on facial adornments, cosmetic enhancements of the facial hair that you have. One day, the lone whisker will become in vogue, and I will be... <laughs> on that trend. I'm always having to remove that bad boy. Anyways, I'm gonna wrap this vlog up. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye!